That would be the dumbest thing that uh, anyone could ever do, especially because that would then cave into all of the... Now, let's get started. Georgia grand jury indicts Trump. 18 allies in election interference case. Let's go. I know you heard about it, about Donald Trump. The former president has been indicted again, this time by the state of Georgia, on charges he and 18 others engaged in criminal conspiracy. They are accused of trying to undermine the results of the 2020 election in Georgia, a state that he lost by nearly 12,000 votes. Now, just in case this is all starting to get confusing, we get it. This is the fourth indictment of the former president who is currently campaigning to be president again. And this one is on serious state charges, which means if he were, if he were to be convicted, he could not pardon himself. Nicole Killian is following it all at the courthouse in Atlanta, and she's yep. got the latest for us. Nicole, good morning to you. What can you tell us? Good morning to you, Gail. District Attorney Fonnie Willis has asked all 19 defendants to surrender within the next 10 days, and she wants to try all of them together. This sprawling indictment lays out an alleged Woo! criminal enterprise citing criminal acts here in Georgia and six other states. But Kemp can e easily can and would pardon him. Uh, as far as I understand, the pardoning process in Georgia is not as open and shut. Uh, there is a pardoning board. And also, Brian Kemp himself is not the type of person who would pardon Donald Trump, in my opinion. I mean, he's a, he's a Republican Party cutout, right? And if Donald Trump won the presidency, he would absolutely pardon him if he had the power to do so. I think he's that type of person because Republicans always fall in line. But... But having said that, Brian Kemp himself is not exactly fond of Donald Trump, partially because of what is literally going on in this Georgia case. Because Brian Kemp is the governor of Georgia. Before he was the governor of Georgia, he was the secretary of state of Georgia. And he was an incredibly corrupt, awful demon of a Republican, as is your job if you are the secretary of state in Georgia. It's quite literally to ensure that you're purging people off the voter ballots, you're making sure that there are no polling stations in like black and brown neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods in general. And that, of course, uh, set him up nicely for the gubernatorial race, which he defeated Stacey Abrams in and became the governor of Georgia. So after that happened, Donald Trump, who had pushed for him originally, did the mafioso thing and said, all right, you know, time to help me out. I've been a supporter of yours. Go ahead. Give me votes. Now, he didn't directly say that to Brian Kemp, but uh, he, he has alluded to it with Brian Kemp as well, uh, including other people, state administration. Um, now, when Brian Kemp said absolutely not and spoke out against it, which, by the way, makes him not a good guy, okay? I don't think he's a good guy at all. I don't think that this is... I don't think that Brian Kemp... And, and uh, Raffelsberger, or however you say his name, I don't think these are, like, good guys. They're still Republicans, okay? But they are party loyalist Republicans and not necessarily Trump loyalist Republicans. They're party loyalist Republicans who are also smart enough to recognize, like, I don't want to go to fucking jail. Okay? So Brian Kemp openly was... Uh, uh, contentious towards Donald Trump, to which Donald Trump absolutely uh, did not take kindly to and then spent pretty much the last couple of years shitting on Brian Kemp, including trying to set up a primary opponent against him who lost. So the reality is that uh, the reality is that there is a uh, you know, there's not exactly a lot of love between Brian Kemp and Donald Trump. So even in a situation in Georgia, uh, as I mistakenly thought, where the governor could pardon you in other, because you can do that in other states, I thought maybe, I thought maybe I'm Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp would be the 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 funny man standing between Trump and freedom, uh, because Trump could technically, I guess, pardon himself on federal issues, on federal crimes, but he cannot pardon himself on state crimes. So we'd have to go to Brian Kemp and beg him to pardon him. But that is not the case in Georgia anyway. The governor does not have, uh, uh, you know, uh, pardon power in the same way that uh, in other states the governor does. 
understand. Like, it's not like Brian Kemp is a good guy. Uh, and the reason why I wanted you to understand that, the reason why I wanted you to see that, I like that people are saying fucking gross. First of all, it, I mean, of course it's gross. It's like, that's what conservative politics is, okay? Conservative politics revolves around vice signaling. The only truthful thing that he said in that situation was, he's Brian Kemp, and also that uh, he wants to deregulate. That's it. Everything else is just like seasoning. Oh, I want to round up illegals in my F-350, in the back of my F-350. It's like, hey, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. If Brian Kim had the power and wouldn't pardon Trump, the libs would suck him like they did Liz Cheney. Yes. He also, yeah, he also ironically, and Megaphonics is uh, correct in this, did the classic, yep, I did that. <laughs> That's a lightsaber dude meme, but like in a Republican fashion. He's like, yep, I said that. I said it. Illegals, I'm rounding them up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's racism, dude. Anyway, uh, in 2020, the, uh, so Donald Trump posted this, said a large, complex, detailed, but irrefutable report on the presidential election fraud, which took place in Georgia, is almost complete and will be presented by me at a major news conference at 11 a.m. on Monday of next week in Bedminster, New Jersey. Based on the result of this conclusive report, all charges should be dropped against me and others. There will be a complete exoneration. They never went after those that rigged the election. They only went after those that fought to find. And I'm not going to clip. I'm not going to get clipped reading that. Okay. Because there's a lot of people out there that uh, desperately work in overtime to try to clip me out of context saying something that even uh, is, is near uh, the N word. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump on that. Okay. Not doing it. Anyway. Um, so, this is a, an extension, a continuation of, like, the classic perfect phone call. Okay? Perfect phone call. The greatest phone call of all time, which, is, which was perfect. It is perfect, not in the way that Trump thinks is perfect, but it's perfect to show, like, criminal conspiracy and fraud. Um. It's perfect in the sense that uh, in the phone call, he actually said the exact number, for example. Like, he didn't actually ballpark it. He didn't say 12,000. He said 11,780 votes. And then followed that up with one more than we have right now, which is, you know, it is perfect for the fucking district attorney. It's perfect for the prosecutorial team. They're like, oh, my God, how perfect is this for us? It's a slam dunk case. Now, I have seen a lot of very funny defenses of this. Uh, classic internet hippo meme comes to mind where uh, he once famously said, a lot of what's happening with conservatism in modern day is basically looking at like crimes and then making it seem as though it's not a crime where they'll, they'll just, they'll, like Donald Trump uh, and his defenders are, are saying like, I didn't know it was illegal to just, make a phone call to a friend on a Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not the point. You're, you're, you're saying things that are illegal in the phone call, which is unironically the conservative defense. Now people are basically stating, Oh, it's illegal to say the election was rigged. Wow. Oh my God. They're coming after you too. It's like, no, they're not coming after you, Deborah. They're not coming after you, Hank, okay? Like, it's not illegal to say the election was stolen. You've been saying it non-fucking-stop since the election was stolen from you by Joe Biden. See, I'm saying it too. Joe Biden stole the election from Donald Trump. Sucks to suck. You got got by a fucking corpse, okay? There, there you go. Arrest me, officers. I've said the, the election was stolen, okay? Notice how that's not illegal for me to say. Is it because I'm a libtard? No. 
It's because I'm not saying it in the act of a criminal conspiracy when I'm giving a clear directive to a person in a position of power to behave a certain way that is illegal. Here, there it is. Um, this is the OG. Ne new right-wing thing is describing crimes as generically as possible to pretend like they're not crimes. Someone gets convicted of conspiracy and they start yelling, wow, so it's illegal to make plans with friends now. That's what they're doing. Making fun of Mike Pence is illegal now too, says Jack Posobiec. Calling Mike Pence a wimp is now a felony in the communist state of Georgia, says Cat Turd. Fuck yeah. Here's some more. Greg Price says, things that are now illegal according to the Georgia indictment. Asking people for phone numbers, reserving rooms in Capitol building, telling people to watch TV, getting people to attend legislative hearings. It's illegal to rob a bank now. It's illegal, it's illegal to go to a bank now. It's illegal to ask for money at a bank. That's what, that's what this is. That is literally what this is. And you know what? If you were to ask me in like 2014, 2015... I would have said these guys know what they're saying is not true. That they are being deceptive on purpose because they think this is a good way to deflect away from the main point of contention. In 2023, I'm not so sure. I think they are this stupid. I think literally they are this stupid. I think they have bludgeoned themselves in the head with so much entitlement, so much American exceptionalism, so much American individualism, and so much American dogma that I do legitimately think they are this stupid. Like, like the family of the guy in Provo, Utah, who very clearly said, I am going to assassinate the president with my M24 that I'm dusting off right now. I'm going to wear a ghillie suit and I'm going to kill him. He's coming to, the, he's coming to town and I'm going to do all of these things. He said that. Right? He posted on Facebook. Then he followed it up by saying, FBI, I know you're watching. You know, come over to my house. I have guns waiting for you. You know, I'll, I'll kill you too. That was an invitation for suicide by law enforcement. Okay? That's what that was. Now, every normal person should understand that. And yet, for some reason, there were conservatives who were saying, no, it's his free speech right. Because I do legitimately think people are that stupid now. I do legitimately believe that people are that fucking stupid now. Okay? You're catching up finally? No, I think that there was always a lot of stupid people. I think that there were always a lot of stupid people. Okay? However... However, I think the thought leaders on the conservative side were maliciously engaging with them. Uh, they were doing it in a cynical way. They were behaving dumber than they actually are because they think it's a de deceiving counter. It's a successful counter. I no longer believe that the thought leaders on the right, for the most part, are actually doing this cynically. I think that they are doing it because they're just as stupid. It's also kind of wild because back in the day, maybe we banned too many people, but back in the day when I used to duke it out about issues like this, there would be a significant number of Trump supporters in here at the very least trying to defend it. And those guys are gone. And I don't know if it's because there's not a lot of momentum or excitement to defend Donald Trump publicly because they recognize that he's fucked, or I don't know if they just gave up. I don't know if we banned all of them. You know? But it makes me kind of sad. Makes me kind of sad. I'll admit. <sighs> it's cynical, but it's their only avenue to argue, so they lost their creative touch. Maybe they're on kick. I don't know. Maybe they died of COVID.
I don't know if there is a, there's more of an indication of what the situation is. I don't know if this is a better indication of what the situation looks like because we have seen the real life examples of this. If Donald Trump was arrested or indicted in like 2021, I feel like there would be a tremendous crowd. I feel like there would be so many more people that are out in public defending Donald Trump. And yet, and yet, we don't see them. We don't see them nowadays. And I don't know what the fuck's going on. And I, I've said this before. I think January 6th was uh, definitely uh, the first time where uh, mainstream Republican supporters did something that was truly uh, fucked up in the eyes of the law and they suffered um they suffered the the consequences of that legally and they were shocked and i think they they legitimately thought that this would not happen to them yeah But they're not out there protesting, and it makes me sad. It makes me sad not to see him. I miss him a little bit. I do. I miss him. Maybe the government should uh, scale back on their militancy towards these bold, beautiful, patriotic Americans. On the other hand, however, here's the Washington Post. Opinion. Is Georgia's case against Trump one case too many? I told you this yesterday. I, 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 keep, I keep asking liberals to deliver, and they keep delivering. I was waiting for someone on the liberal side to finally come out and be like, listen, I think we should just let him go. I mean, come on. In the interest of fairness and bipartisanship, we should, we should maybe just let the little guy do a little bit of crime. Come on. Let a few slide. Liberals will always try to go back to this reasonable center that they've cultivated that is not so reasonable. Okay? They'll always try to re-triangulate no matter what happens. It's always going to happen. But let's get started. Let's watch. We have so many clips on the docket here. Uh, we covered what Trump had said. Let's hear some of the details first, and then we'll dive into the reactions. A grand jury in Atlanta returned an indictment that alleges former President Trump and 18 other defendants knowingly joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the 2020 election in the state of your boy Ryan Grimm said that with the last indictment, even suggested Biden should pardon Trump if he promised not to run for president. Yeah, that's insane. That would be the dumbest thing that uh, anyone could ever do, especially because that would then cave into all of the, all of the things that uh, Republicans have been claiming, that they're only doing this to stop Donald Trump from running and not because he legitimately has done crimes, which he has. Georgia. The defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. The indictment was handed up before cameras Monday night after the grand jury heard from a series of witnesses. It culminates a two and a half year investigation by Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. The indictment charges 19 people, including Trump, his former White House chief of... Who's this lady? What's her name? This is the dish attorney, Fonnie Willis, who is not a great person, in my opinion. I think she's a massive careerist, and uh, she's, she's utilized the RICO uh, chart. She's utilized RICO statutes against uh, teachers, 
she tried. I, I don't know if it was her that specifically tried to use it against the the cop city protesters or someone else. But most famously, she's utilized the Rico against YSL. Free Jeffrey, free slime. Uh, I'm of course referencing Young Thug. Um. So. I think that, uh, yeah, she's a typical careerist. Uh, Cop City protest is getting Rico's in, uh, in Georgia. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if it was her direction or someone else on that. Of staff Mark Meadows, former lawyer Rudy Giuliani, conservative attorney John Eastman, former Justice Department. God damn, look at these defendants, dude. This is a sexy ass list, baby. Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, Mark Meadows, and our boy Kenneth Cheese, bro. He's back. Jeffrey Clark, Jenna Ellis, Ray Smith III, Robert Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, David Schaefer, Sean Still, Stephen Lee, Harrison Floyd, Trevian C. Cuddy, and of course, yet another incredible one, Sidney Powell, as we know. This is also from the federal case as well. Some of these are from the federal case. These are some of the other defendants. Um, Kathy Latham, Scott Hall, Missy Hampton. Now, one thing that I will admit, I do love me a good story. I do love me a good story that starts with America's mayor. America's mayor that got to that position after 9-11, but won that mayoral role by being an aggressive prosecutor. That's right. Rudolph Giuliani was a very famous prosecutor. Famous for what? Famous for tackling organized crime. Using what statute? You guessed it. A motherfucking Rico, baby. If there's one guy that knows, if there's one guy that knows Rico's in and out, full circle, we're talking Rudolph Giuliani. You love to see it, folks. How, how the mighty have fallen, okay? This is a very fun story for many different reasons. But that is just the one that I personally find really hilarious. Uh, one of these people is also a publicist for Kanye West. I don't know exactly which one it is, but that was really funny as well. Um, and of course, obviously, uh, Fonnie Willis, the DA, uh, also was prosecuting or is prosecuting the YSL case as well. It's Trevian C. Cuddy, which is Kanye's publicist. It's fucking is awesome. Department official Jeffrey Clark and several other Trump allies. The former president is facing 13 <laughs> felony counts, including violating Georgia's RICO Act, a racketeering law used to take down major crime organizations. There's no way we lost Georgia. There's no way. The rigged, that was a rigged election. The investigation. I was looking for some of these names. Harrison Floyd is the leader of the Black Voices for Trump. Oh, I love that. In this picture, a person holds up a sign, Black Voices for Trump, at a march and rally for President Donald Trump. Have you seen this? Oh, is this the Larry King? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something, okay? We're going to get to the reactions. Hold on. Spoilerino, okay? Spoilerino alert. Um, John Eastman, one of Trump's lawyers that got recoded, is going to be disbarred as a lawyer next week in Los Angeles court by the state of California um, uh, due to his actions to push false allegations of voter fraud following the 2020 presidential election. The bro Trump attorney now faces 11 disciplinary charges in an ongoing trial taking place in downtown Los Angeles. For the record, I mean, things are not looking good for the Trump people, Okay especially considering that Donald Trump famously does not care about defending those who have stood by him. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I love this shit. I love it. I enjoy it. And you should too. This is a moment where no matter how much of a Maoist third worldist or whatever the fuck you are, you can just sit back and watch a person with profound amounts of power who has been so incredibly and transparently corrupt get what's coming for him by other people that are also uniquely corrupt in their own ways, right? But still, 
It's it's like a telenovela. I am libbed up on this day, and I am not ashamed to admit that I'm libbed up on this day. Okay? Yeah. This is my fight song. You know what I mean? I'm I'm Hillary fucking I'm Hillary Rodden Clinton. was first sparked by this January 2021 phone call. You should love it. No, dude. I real life lost most of my direct family to this. I'm tired, bro. What do you mean? What do you what what are you talking about? Like are you talking about COVID or what? Like are you excited? You should still love it and enjoy it that Donald Trump's going to potentially jail or something. Like, what do you mean? Where then President Trump as Georgia Secretary of State Republican Brad Raffensperger to find the votes to win him Georgia. Trump has repeatedly defended the call and denied all wrongdoing. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have. Rudy Giuliani is one of the defendants. As I've said time and time again in this perfect phone call, which Donald Trump is right, it was a perfect phone call, he very openly states the exact number, one more vote than what he was losing to Joe Biden by. Now, sorry, when you fucking ask that to a person whose who's role and responsibility in the election is, is direct, directly controlling the elections, you're... You're not just simply asking a question. You can't rob a bank and then turn around and be like, I'm just exercising my First Amendment rights. I just wanted to get the money from the bank. What the fuck's going on? As we have used the bank analogy time and time again, it does not also matter whether you legitimately believe that the bank has your money or not. That is not a defense. You can't in your mind think, well, this bank has my money. So I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to threaten the person that works at the bank to give me the money, to put it in the bag. That's still a bank robbery, okay? And a number that specific is actually, you know, not really Trumpian at all, unless it is for a specific purpose. And that purpose is, find these fucking votes for me so I win Georgia accused of racketeering and conspiracy for making calls to pressure local officials and making false statements about election fraud before legislative committees. I don't have to be a genius to figure out that those votes are not legitimate votes. His lawyer called the indictment a book of lies. I consider this uh, very unfair, uh, very unjust toward me, but much (laughs) worse toward my country. The indictment also accuses several defendants of harassing and intimidating Fulton County election worker... Any chance he did this in 2016, too? No. How could he have done it in 2016? He was just a real estate guy. He didn't have any fucking power to do this. This is... Okay, understand something. What Donald Trump is doing here is not a crime that, like, a lot of other Americans or the average American can get indicted for. Because you have to be the president or at least, like, in contact with the secretary of state or the lieutenant governor of the state that you want to change the election outcomes in. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why whenever people say, they came after Trump, they're going to come after you too, buddy. Like, that's a silly take. Because if you, okay, if your HVAC business-owning father tried to call in, to a congressperson's office or the governor's office and said, hey, you better find 11,780 votes right now and then click, ended the phone call. That's probably not prosecutable. That's, you know, depending on the level of threat that you, your, your HVAC business owner father engaged in, right? But that's entirely different than what Trump was doing. A deliberate attempt Anyway. Ruby Freeman to falsely confess to election crimes. She testified before the House January 6th Select Committee last summer. Do you know how it feels to have the President of the United States to target you? In a statement, Trump's legal team... This was actually one of the most devastating parts about it, too, for the record. 
Um, we can we can cover like a longer part of her testimony, but it was so it was so sad. It's so sad. There are very real people that suffered. There are very real people that suffered as a consequence of Donald Trump's uh, schemes. You know what I mean? It's to target you. In a statement, Trump's legal team accused the DA of trying to force through and rush the indictment. We look at the facts, we look at the law, and we bring charges. According to the Fulton County... And the people, you know who was like at the leading the helm on the threatening of that uh, random lady? Rudolph motherfucking Giuliani. So I hope he goes to jail. Giuliani clerk's office, a fictitious document was posted to a website Monday appearing to reveal the charges against the former president, but it was quickly taken down. The DA didn't comment on the post, but said it's an issue for the court. Gail. CBS News legal analyst, that's Ricky Kleeman, and our chief election and campaign correspondent, Robert Costa. Good morning to you both. Ricky, let's start with you. You know, I know a lot of people have indictment fatigue. I keep Yeah, poll workers are just normal people who volunteer and are very sweet, uh, civic-minded people who just want to do something good. Obviously, some of them are freaks now, especially with, like, uh, the, the Trump wave of trying to manipulate every aspect of an election. But overall, most poll workers, which, by the way, are Republican in red states, like, in, in red districts, like, they're still fucking Republican, you know what I mean? Um... They're doing it because they want to make it as accessible as possible. Remember this? Trevian baiting Ruby into a police station? Oh, yeah, I do remember this. Trevian Cuddy, a former publicist for Kanye West, was indicted today for her role of pressuring Fulton County election worker Ruby Freeman, as shown here in this video. Yeah, we did cover this back then. 100%. Yeah, she's fucking freak, dude. Absolute psycho. You are a for a party that needs to tie you up. I work with some of the biggest names in the industry. Crisis is my thing. Um, one thing we don't want to do for you is create another crisis. I'm going to call Harrison Cohen. I'm going to put him on speaker. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be Harrison Cohen? Is Harrison Cohen? Yeah, I mean, they Acid Burns uh made uh, a a massive post, effort post on Twitter. I got curious. Here's my sloppy notes. Rudy Giuliani, well known. Johnny's been the Federal Society. Mark Meadows, Conservative Partnership Institute. Kenneth Cheesebro, lawyer, bar certified in uh, California, Florida, MA, New Jersey, New York, Texas. Jeffrey Clark, Chief of Litigation and Director of Strategy for the New Civil Liberties Alliance, NCLA, also recipient of a house raid by the feds. Jenna Ellis, lawyer, bar certified in Colorado, Club Q shooting truther, world's worst Gen X Scorpio. Ray Smith III, lawyer, bar certified in Georgia, the least prepared Eagle Scout. Robert Cheeley, lawyer, bar certified in GA, American Association of Justice member. Michael Roman, treasurer at the International Democratic Union, ran an in-house intelligence unit for the Koch brothers. David Schaefer, ex-Georgia State Senator, Twitter subscriber to Ian Miles Chong. That's funny. Sean, Micah, Treasure, Still, dude has four names and no easily discernible web presence. 
Stephen Lee, a.k.a. Rever, uh, Reverend uh, Stephen Cliffguard Lee, a police chaplain who currently leads a suburban Chicago Lutheran church. Harrison Floyd, member of Black Voices for Trump, self-described entrepreneur, Trevi and Cuddy, former publicist of Kanye West, obvious girl boss, self-proclaimed media manipulator. Sydney Catherine Powell, disgraced Texas lawyer, Dominion voting systems truther. As you guys know, Sydney Powell is one of the goats. Uh... Self-described theories that are pretty wackadoo. Kathleen Latham, former Coffee County uh, GOP chairwoman, terrible at noticing surveillance cameras, fake elector. Scott Hall, poll watcher, such a genetic name. Missy Hampton, Coffee County member, helped with machine interference. The International Democratic Union is the right-wing counter to the Socialist International, by the way. I love that. The liberals were like, we should do our own socialist international. That's fire. It's just called every facet of, of, of Western liberal democracy, but I guess they wanted their own little club on top of that. <clears throat> the hogs are so sad. Can't wait to see them throw a temper tantrum. Honestly, the hogs are sad, but temper tantrums is one that I expected as well. And yet, for some reason, it's not coming, at least in public. They're just chirping on TikTok for the most part and, and are almost doing it just to garner attention and support from other hogs that are also on TikTok. Back in the day, back in the day, they would chirp on TikTok nonstop, but then they'd also kind of storm the halls. They would get together. This was a community activity for them. They've turned into fucking internet slacktivists. They are, in some ways, doing the, the uh, black Instagram block for BLM. Hog energy used to actually lead to on-the-ground momentum. That was a big difference uh, that, that, uh, that you immediately noticed when, when comparing Donald Trump to any other candidate. Think about it. Donald Trump could always fill up a stadium. Okay? Now, you know, you'll get a lot of likes if you say Civil War, even though, I mean, look, I dunked on Tim Pool uh, last night. I saw this, and I was like, I have to make fun of this. This is so stupid. Um, Tim Pool said Civil War only got 4,000 likes. I say, imagine going to civil war over Rudolph Giuliani alongside the 25 other frees that were bored enough to go to the Trump courthouse protest. It's like, it, it, it's not even getting you the clout that it normally did. It once did. The momentum is dull. How were they able to mobilize for January 6th? Do they not want to organize in fear of being arrested? Two reasons, and I have said this so many times. Two reasons as to why January 6th is not happening again in these situations. Number one, and perhaps most important, January 6th happened with astroturfed instruments that the Republican Party regularly utilizes that are currently not working at the behest of Donald Trump anymore. You forget the Republican Party isn't just politicians and the Republican voters. The Republican Party is comprised of a shit ton of, uh, uh, of, of think tanks and institutions that you've never heard of and some that you have like ALEC and, and you know, Turning Point USA that is a more uh, famous uh, version of this that actually uh, bust people in to D.C. that made it easier for people to get angry in one specific location. Now, that's not really happening. The, the, the money that was backing Donald Trump is not necessarily backing Donald Trump in the same way any longer. Uh, we saw this. There was a, an alternative conference that occurred uh, after Donald Trump had announced his uh, presidential run uh, last year. There was another conference that was happening alongside CPAC where uh, I think it was either RNC or CPAC, which one was it, where all the big-ticket donors the Koch brothers and the like, actually brought Ron DeSantis, who at the time had not announced that he was running for president, 
as a speaker during RNC where Donald Trump was speaking. If you got all of the think tank owning billionaires sitting back and waiting uh, to see the outcome of this uh, primary and refusing to pump AstroTurf dollars into Donald Trump, and Donald Trump doesn't have that same juice and momentum that he did in 2016 as an outsider candidate who says it like it is, all of a sudden you're arriving at a different problem. Now, the second reason why January 6th uh, is unlikely to happen again is because it already happened, and Republicans, for the first time, realize that even if you are a uh, white business owner from a southern state where you normally in your little town are untouchable and could utilize law enforcement like your own private brand of mercenaries, well, that's not the case when you go and storm the Capitol. Not necessary. You don't have that level of entitlement uh, uh, that translates to, to uh, practice when you do actually uh, go and, and storm the halls of Congress. It was a come-to-Jesus moment for a lot of people that thought before that they could get away with doing whatever kind of fucking crime that they wanted to, whatever kind of ruckus that they wanted to cause. So I think that that definitely had a chilling effect. They realized that their privilege only extended so far which I think stopped a lot of Americans uh, as a deterrent, stopped a lot of Americans from participating in activities like this. Um, here it is, by the way. Got to post this. Obviously, Trevian Cuddy. Among those who threatened Ruby Friedman was Trevian Cuddy, an alleged Kanye associate and former publicist for R. Kelly and a friend of Candace Owens. Here she is on the private jet with the My Pillow guy. I suspect the Michael Pillow guy no longer is uh, has that private jet. Let's watch. Breaking down Trump's fourth indictment. Let's hear what the liberals have to say, and then we'll get to the fun the stuff. One. Help us understand how this one is different. We keep hearing this one is different, and this one is more serious. I have always said the Georgia case was the most serious. Well, you've got a 90-page more. A well, 90 it's page here, plus all 98 pages of it, and it has that infamous RICO count. Hmm. And the reason that this case is so serious is when you have a RICO count that's racketeering, influence, corrupt organizations. It was used originally for the mob. That was why it was created. And what you have is a mandatory minimum sentence for anyone who's convicted. It's a punishment of five to 20 years. So there's no walk away from this. There's no probation on this if any one of these 19 defendants is convicted. Donald Trump has been able to say that the federal government is weaponized against him. Fannie Willis, Fannie Willis as the DA is not part of the federal government. And one of the things that we note here is that her work in being so, so thorough, under RICO, you have all of these acts that have to constitute a, a racketeering enterprise with acts, and you have yeah. to convict them of at least two acts. Hmm. She's got 161 acts. And she's got 19 co-defendants. Co what are the challenges or the advantages, if there are such a thing, of trying that many people? I've tried, that seems cumbersome, too. It's very cumbersome. I've tried cases involving many, many defendants. I don't think I've gotten as far as 19, but I certainly have gotten over 12. And what you have to remember is timing. Donald Trump says, why did all this take so long? Well, they weaponized the Justice Department against me. Well, here, if you thought this took long, wait till you see how long this trial starts. Yeah. You're going to have to bring all these people in to be arraigned. But when you get to trial, you have 19 lawyers who can question jurors, mm -hmm. who can question witnesses. Mm -hmm. This is a long trial. Yes, it is, Ricky. Um, Bob, let's bring you in here. How does this Georgia case fit into the broader January 6th storyline? 
Nate, it's good to be with you. We've been following the January 6th story for so long, and what's important to understand about Georgia is that it's a microcosm for understanding what happened after the election in 2020. Trump and his allies seized on different states as a path to stay in power. Georgia, perhaps unlike any other, they saw a red state that they could try to nudge in their direction to get the legislature to buy in. Election officials, they called up on the phone and said, try to help get us the votes. And they used Georgia as a way to really keep Trump in the White House on January 6th by using the veneer of alleged voter fraud, which never existed, as a, as, as a means of doing that. And, and all of the Trump characters who are part of the January 6th story at a federal level are now going to be coming to Fulton County, to Atlanta, to be on camera as part of, the, as part of this proceeding. Bob, indicted in Georgia, he's also campaigning in Georgia. What's the impact on the Trump campaign there? The big decision former President Trump has to make in the coming days is when is he going to arrive to be arraigned in Fulton County, and will he do that before or after the Republican debate next week in Milwaukee, and will he even show up at the Republican debate? So many of his rivals are wondering if he's going to show up. For now, Trump allies tell CBS News he's leaning against showing up in Milwaukee and instead is focusing on rallying his own supporters as he faces down all of these indictments. He has the records case on you gotta do it, pussy. in Florida on a federal level, the January 6th case, the New York hush money payments case, and now the Georgia election case. We have no shortage of things to mm -hmm. keep track of. Now, yeah. Bob Costa, Ricky Kleeman, thank you to you both for trying to sort it out for us. And here's Fannie Willis, who I do not like, who's doing at least a good thing in this situation. Let's take a look. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with the prosecutors and investigators who have worked diligently on the investigation of criminal attempts to interfere in the administration of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Today, based on information developed by that investigation, a Fulton County grand jury. So when does this guy get arrested? Before next Monday when he totally exonerates himself and proves the election fraud or after? Thank you. Thank you so much. This is what I'm talking about, dude. Finally. Fuck! He's being sarcastic. God damn it! I got so excited. I thought it was... I thought we had a fucking Trump Republican in the chat. Where have they gone? Where are they? I'm, I'm genuinely thinking about doing a mass unban... The problem is like, the problem is the hyper online individuals that are Republican have become like extremely uh, groped up weirdos who like Ron DeSantis and, and white nationalism. So like, I don't want to unban those guys. Those guys fucking suck. Back in the day, there was like the normie conservative who was like, Trump's your president and you should love it, libtard. You know what I mean? Like, the normal Republican who is a Trump supporter has, has gone away. They're gone. Returned a true bill of indictment, charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 <sighs> presidential election in this state. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. Please remember that everyone charged in this bill of indictment is presumed innocent. Specifically, the indictment brings felony charges against Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, 
John Cheesebro, Jeffrey Clark. Not Cheesebro. Jenna. No. Lynn Ellis. Ray Stallings Smith the third. Robert David Cheeley. Michael A. Roman. David James Schaefer. Sean Micah Tresher Steele. Stephen Cliffguard Lee. Harrison William Prescott Floyd. I think a big part of why there's like so many co-conspirators is also because you flip them. You can flip them, you know, like Gunna. She already has a lot of practice with that. Flip him to get the cheese, you know? The rats they come crawling out of the woodwork. And the reality is Donald Trump himself is the king rat. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't give a shit about any of the other people that have ever worked with him. So if you work for Donald Trump, why don't you flip on him, right? Like you have to. He would do the exact same to you. Governor Kemp tweet, we already read it. Yeah. The 2020 election in Georgia was not stolen for nearly three years now. Anyone with evidence of fraud has failed to come forward under oath and prove anything in a court of law. Our elections in Georgia are secure, accessible, and fair, and will continue to be as long as I'm governor. The future of our uh, country is at stake in 2024, and that must be our focus. Part of the reason why Brian Kemp is also saying this is because, newsflash, if you make voting is actually unfair and it's totally fraudulent, your main point to try to draw a larger crowd, you're probably not going to get a lot of people to go out and vote. You're literally depressing voter turnout. You're depressing voter turnout by constantly saying your vote doesn't matter. Your vote doesn't matter. Your vote doesn't matter. That's what's going on. A lot of people don't want to vote anyway because it's like a chore. It's, it's made as difficult as possible by... Uh, the, the Republican party and the democratic party also, it kind of takes advantage of that every now and then, but ultimately, ultimately voting is not easy to do in this country. It's, it's complicated, especially in comparison to other countries. So constantly railing against mail-in ballots, for example, constantly railing against initiatives that make it easier to vote, for example is going to depress turnout. And your expectation is that it'll depress Democratic Party turnout, which is true, especially when done correctly. This has been a major strategy for the Republican Party uh, to, to win state elections, to win local elections, and certainly to win the presidency by the Electoral College, right? Implementing new measures all the time, uh, shutting off polling stations, uh, in, in black and brown neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods that historically vote Democrat, making it as hard as possible for the working class to vote by, make it, by refusing to, to make it a national holiday to go out and vote. I was talking to my French friend, uh, Squeezy, earlier today about uh, voting in America, and, and he was shocked when he found out that, uh, you know, it's on a Tuesday. It's like, what? I was like, yeah, it's a work day. Shocked. He didn't understand it. How do you respond to conservatives who claim the only reason the fraud evidence hasn't been proven in a court of law is because every time they've tried, they've been dismissed on a lack of standing, what they claim is a technicality? I mean... I don't know how to respond to that. It's, it's, in a way, it's no different. You can have, you can make any kind of erroneous, ridiculous, made-up claim. There is, a, there is a real reason for why um, these courts in our criminal justice system have a 
have that procedure in place. It's to hand wave away. It's to hand wave away ridiculous claims such as that. And it's not always for a lack of standing for the record. There are certainly certain, uh, there are certainly cases that have been uh, pushed aside by the courts for a lack of standing. But you're, what you're talking about is, is coming in the aftermath of multiple recounts, hand recounts, electronic recounts. Like, you can't do that. I'm a lawyer and can respond. They lost on other issues too, not just standing, unwarranted delay, latches, etc. Anyway. And by the way, half of the judges that have dismissed these ridiculous lawsuits aren't even Democrats. They're not libs. Most of these guys, especially in the states that Trump is pushing these lawsuits, are Trump appointees or lifelong Republican judges. So, like, the idea that we have to go and find someone who, like, you know, sleeps with a Trump blanket on and only then can we find uh, true justice in this world is already a silly one, but it's one that Republicans already operate under, right? The notion that, like, well, the only time you can truly try anybody is if a Republican is the one doing it, right? It's a meme in Washington at this point. But nowadays, even if it's a Republican or a Trump appointee, it doesn't matter because if it doesn't go in the direction that Trump wants it to go, then it's still fraudulent. I mean, how? yeah, witnesses in this situation in Georgia are fucking Republicans, okay? They're Republicans. They're lifelong Republicans. The lieutenant governor who's a key witness in this case, is a Republican, okay? He's the Republican lieutenant governor, or was the Republican lieutenant governor. There's also some additional information here. A state agency is moving ahead with plans that will determine whether Lieutenant Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones faces criminal charges as a part of the scheme to overturn, overturn the 2020 presidential election in Georgia, D. Wickard reports. Jones is one of 30 people who prosecutors said participated in a conspiracy to overturn the election. Like, this is the current lieutenant governor. The former one was a key witness. Jones had served as a fake GOP elector, supported lawsuits that sought to void the 2020 election, and pressed Vice President Mike Pence to reject the official results. The lib judge jury jurisdiction argument is so funny to me. All these indictments are in places where Trump has committed the crimes. New York City, D.C., Florida, Georgia. So maybe Trump should stop committing crimes in liberal jurisdictions. Yeah, except some of those places are not liberal jurisdictions like Florida or even Georgia. That's the hilarious part about this is like the idea that Georgia is like a deep blue state is so funny when like it was somewhat of an upset. You know what I mean? Like, when did Georgia become this beacon of, a, you know, democratic prosperity all of a sudden? It's so fucking stupid. And Florida is not liberal at all. But they basically want to only be tried in, like, a West Virginia district that was, like, plus 65 Donald Trump with, like, eight people that are all related to one another and a thousand fucking cows that live in the district. That's it. That's the only time it can be true justice is when the outcome is what I want it to be. Any other outcome is injustice. That's what it is. These people are entitled babies. Here is an example. Train derailments, all of our food factories, processing plants, burning down or closing 
down. Majority of the world is on fire right now. Look at the map. What's happened in Hawaii was a direct attack. I know that in my heart. It's not going to stop. She knows it in her heart. She knows in her heart. You can't change your mind. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and she knows in her heart she's not going to see it, okay? But she will, unless she's subscribed. But she, it don't matter. She'll look at the ad break, and she'll go, I don't care. Don't see it in my heart of hearts. I know it's not true. It is true. At the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free, or by getting gifted a sub like Psychedelic Gazelle, which gifted 10 gifted subs to allow 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Yeah, she knows. She knows it was lasers. I know it in my heart. It was a direct energy weapon. Mountain Dew, I stopped drinking that garbage. Let me tell you something. Mountain Dew is somehow involved. PepsiCo. Everything is a grand conspiracy except for the grandest conspiracy of all, which is capitalism. Gabe Samish, thank you for the five gifted subs. What if Trump uses a song cause it defense? Then I think he has a, tr a chance of getting acquitted. Yeah, that only works in the court of uh, public opinion in a very hyper niche part of the internet. That is Twitch, Reddit, certain circles on Twitter. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, that's not going to work for, you know, real uh, law. We haven't gotten to that part yet. You know what I mean? We, we People are not that fucking stupid yet to be like, Your Honor, have you considered that uh, there are communists abound? I was simply doing what I had to. Anytime soon, the elites have started war against us. And everybody's just sitting back. It has started, you guys. It's been started. When is enough going to be enough? I mean, this is literally the, this is the continual SJW meme when Trump got elected. You know what I mean? Everyone's a liberal. Everyone's a liberal. Never forget it, folks. Conservatives are also liberals. They're all libtards, okay? Everyone at the end of the day is just like, <laughs> I can't believe it. Democracy manifest. What is happening? It's scary times right now. It's not going to stop. It's only going to keep getting worse. We have to stand with President Trump and every single politician that supports him. Evil is taking over. I love that. I love that, dude. So good. All right, let's hear Fonnie Willis. Wait, Travion C. Cootie, Sydney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Austin Latham, Scott Graham Hall, some and Misty Hampton, also known as Emily Misty Hayes. Every individual charged in the indictment is charged with one count of violating Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through participation in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of allowing Donald J. Trump to seize the presidential term of office beginning on January 20th, 21. Specifically, the participants in association took various actions in Georgia and elsewhere to block the counting of the votes of the presidential electors.
abide, abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. Subsequent to the indictment, as is the normal process in Georgia law, the, the grand jury issued arrest warrants for those who are charged. I am giving the defendants the opportunity to voluntarily surrender no later than noon on Friday, the 25th day of August, 2023. Oh. I remind everyone here that an indictment is only a... That's so soon. That's so soon. Trump has a week to make up the best lie of his life. I'm excited to see what it is. I mean, he's cooking something. He said on Monday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time, he is going to go to an undisclosed location. I don't know where he said he was going to do it, but he is going to reveal uh, verifiable, irrefutable evidence that the election in, in uh, Georgia was stolen. Oh, from Bedminster. Okay. Bedminster, New Jersey, folks, no better way and no better place to describe crimes against me, Donald John Trump. Series of allegations based on a grand jury's determination of probable cause to support the charges. One funny part of this uh, that I guess uh, is is almost like a perfect uh, uh, thing that the the multiple different prosecutions uh, since January 6 has created is an environment that is not interested in like any kind of serious rioting or anything like that. There's not enough organizational power. There's not enough momentum behind it, which is why even if Tr Donald Trump would turn around and try to like hit the January 6 notes again and be like, they're coming after me, folks. We got to do something about it. We've already played that. We've already happened. We, we've Instagram. already watched that happen in real time. So, like, even if he was like, I'm begging you, go out and riot in the fucking streets or whatever, he's quite literally being prosecuted for that right now. He is being prosecuted for that right now. And all of the other guys who were willing and able to do that are currently in jail for doing it the first time. Yeah, some might say he played his trump card. It is now the duty of my office to prove these charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt All at right, trial. I would like to take a moment to thank, thank the Superior Court clerk, Shay Alexander, and her staff your, for staying late Robert, you can and also making sure that this indictment was processed. I would also like to thank the men and women of Sheriff Labatt's office for keeping the courthouse open, but most importantly, for keeping us safe over the weeks and months that have led up to this indictment and for what I know they will continue to do to keep us safe. We also want to thank the Atlanta Police Department and other law enforcement partners who have worked with the sheriff to keep us safe. I will now take a very limited number of questions prior uh, to going to sleep. <laughs> I'll go first. Um, uh, if you don't mind, Savannah Levins with 11 Alive. Quick question, can you clarify in Georgia uh, the mandatory minimum when it comes to RICO charges, whether it's servable by probation or how that might- Yeah, we're gonna talk about the explanation for the leak in a second. Play out. The, the RICO charges has time that you have to serve, so it is not a probated sentence. Madam District Attorney, what's the timetable for your trial? What is the timetable for the trial? As you know, in this jurisdiction, trials are set by the judges. Um, and so it will be the judge that sets the date of the trial. This office will be su submitting a proposed scheduling order within this week. However, that will totally be at the discretion of the judge. I want to be good. You're the fourth person, the fourth jurisdiction now to indict Donald Trump. Do you believe you need to be the fourth one to try him or could you move it up? Do you want to be the first to try him? I don't have any desire to be first or last. I want to try him and be respectful for our sovereign states. Um, we do want to move this case along, and so we will be asking for a proposed order that occurs a trial date within the next six months. Have you had any contact? Um, there was earlier today, there like was a fictitious document, according to 
the Fulton County Clerk's Office that was circulated online with charges against former President Donald Trump. Those, that fictitious document uh, matched exactly the charges that we now see in this indictment. Can you tell us more about that document leak? Uh, because now you have the former president's lawyers who are saying this is emblematic of a serious problem with your office. No, I can't tell you anything about um, what you refer to. What I can tell you is that we had a grand jury here in Fulton County. They deliberated till almost 8 o'clock, if not right after 8 o'clock. An indictment was returned. It was true bill, Birds. and you now have He's an bold, indictment. bold, beautiful patriot. Um, I am not an expert on clerks duties um, or even administrative duties. I wouldn't know how to work that system, and so I'm not going to speculate. Next question. Well, have you had any contact with the special counsel about overlap between these cases, and do you intend to try all um, So the, the interesting part about the document leak is that I know a lot of people have talked about it, and I'll, I'll read what the, what the office said in a second, but like, I could totally, if I put my conspiratorial hat on, I would suspect that that document leak was uh, favoring Donald Trump and his team for a potential, gearing up for a potential mistrial. Not only that, but also, uh, I saw somewhere, I don't know if this is real or not, but did they also fucking release the names of the grand jury uh, people? Like they, they accidentally or deliberately, I don't know, released the names of the people that were in the, grand, uh, in the jury? Yes, they did. It's required in Georgia. Oh, okay. There's public in Georgia. That's terrifying. The leak gave Trump more time to purge statement. Yeah, that leak benefits Donald Trump. It's like, it benefits Donald Trump's team uh, way more than uh, it hurts them. This original leak, not the juror one I'm talking about. Um, because, one, you could be like, oh, there's like discrepancies happening. Two, uh, you can... Uh, you can gear up uh, what kind of counter you have for this uh, for this indictment uh, that's coming down. I don't know. This is what their Fulton Clerk of Court uh, provides update on special purpose grand jury documents, by the way. From the Office of the Fulton, Co uh, Fulton County Clerk, Clerk of Superior Magistrate Courts, Honorable Che Alexander. Fulton County, Georgia, the office of the Fulton County Clerk of Superior Magistrate Court announces that midday on August 14th, 2023, a media outlet utilizing the Fulton County press queue obtained a docket sheet and shared it with other media outlets who then released a sample working document related to the former United States President Donald Trump, reporting that an indictment had been returned by the special grand jury in Fulton County, Georgia. Upon learning of the mishap, Fulton County Clerk of Superior Magistrate Courts Che Alexander immediately removed the document and issued correspondence notifying the media that a fictitious document was in circulation and no indictment had been returned to the grand jury. In anticipation of issues that arise with entering a potentially large indictment, Alexander used charges that pre-exist. Wait, hold on. This is important to keep in mind that they have a trap card. Okay. In anticipation of issues that arise with entering a potentially large indictment, Alexander used charges that pre-exist in Odyssey to test the system and conduct the trial run. Unfortunately, the sample working document led to the docketing of what happened, uh, what appeared to be an indictment, but which was, in fact, only a fictitious docket sheet. Because the media has access to documents before they are published, and while it may have appeared that something official had occurred before the document bore a case number and filing date, it did not include a signed true or no bill, nor an official stamp with Clerk Alexander's name, thereby making the document unofficial and a test sample only. Hours later, after receiving the true bill presented to presiding judge Robert McBurney, Clerk Alexander executed the filing with a file stamp, and moments later, she made the filing public. So, here's what's uh, interesting about this situation. 
What a lot of people fail to recognize is that, of course, they know a, a lot of the indictment charges. This is an active investigation. That's the reason why the unofficial sample indictment resembled a lot of the same charges that were in the original one. Why are people saying Bernard? Oh, because Robert McBurney, that's why? You guys are so stupid. Actually. Brainworms. Anyway. The office understands the confusion that this matter caused and the sensitivity of all court filings. We remain committed to operating with an extreme level of efficiency, accuracy, and transparency. Media members can, be expe can expect to be notified of any slash all filings in real time and will be provided access to filings via equitable communication. So, basically, um, it's, not, it's not shocking that they knew what the charges were going to look like because it's an active investigation. It's happening already. And they wanted to put a blanket out there to, I guess, I don't know, test their systems. And accidentally uh, uh, allowed members of the media to see the document and immediately go forward with it. That seems like the most reasonable thing that happened, which is what uh, many in this community were speculating as well. Law tip from a Georgia law boy. The fact that he was indicted... Through a grand jury means nothing about the sufficiency of the evidence. Grand jury proceedings have no rules of evidence, no judge, and no defense counsel. It's largely a performative process meant to legitimize the indictment. He did everything right, and they indicted him. I mean, yeah, that's why Sean Hannity very famously repeated the old trope that a grand jury can indict a ham sandwich. That is a very common law cliche. Okay. But the official processes have to be uh, followed, and they were. But, uh, of course, because they have nothing, the Trump side really has absolutely nothing to uh, defend themselves with, they are going to latch on to anything and everything they can. One of those things that they're grabbing on to is, and I saw this on Majority Report earlier this morning, Sebastian Gorka was talking about it. Uh, he had a really funny line. I, I, I hope I can find it somewhere. Where he... Uh, I, d I don't even want to fucking leak it. I need you to find... Okay, here it is. I found it. Media Matters covered it. Here it is. Former White House advisor in the Trump administration, Sebastian Gorka, joins me now. I think this is the fourth one we've done together, sir. Uh, another indictment. State of Georgia, your thoughts. Well, let's just start with what happened earlier today, Rob. What a farage, what a clown show that the Clark County Court's webpage lists the 30 felony indictments, including a RICO statute, and then whoops, it just magically disappears. I am Immediately, Sebastian Gorka hits the, oh, well, it, they released it ahead of time, which means, of course, it cannot be an accident, but instead... It implies that there is something evil going on in the state of Georgia. He immediately tweeted out the document and I said, this is a con. I mean, this is a setup that, you know, it's so pre-cooked, it's so pre-baked that they've got this thing ready even before the judge has signed off on it, as you saw, as you just showed a few moments ago. I mean, right. it, it just tells you. Just okay, well, first of all, they absolutely did not pre-sign on it. So there is that. Just how corrupt this whole process is. And let's And also that's how fucking investigations work. It's not everyone involved in at least like the the uh judicial process had a decent understanding of what the huh. like this doesn't materialize immediately in front of the grand jury, these indictments, okay? Like, they know. They know what the, what the charges are. They have to show it to the fucking grand jury. So clearly, everyone in the periphery has a decent understanding that is uh, related to uh, the, the grand jury hearings in the court side, uh, at the DA's office. They all obviously 
have a decent understanding of what the fucking indictments are, are looking like because they have to show those to the grand jury. These materials are not crazy and cooked out of nowhere. These materials are a consequence of a multiple year long investigation. And the first part of said investigation coming to the court proceeding, uh, uh, the, the uh, coming in front of the court is the grand jury where you have to show your work. So the idea that this is like, it's so pre-cooked, they leaked it three hours before it was uh, officially certified by a judge is so fucking stupid. Yeah, dude, I know. It, they, they, it was a grand conspiracy to fucking leak it three hours ahead of time. That's, it's, you know, big, big, massive grand conspiracy. Let's be clear. I mean, read the transcript of the Raffensburger call. I've got it in front of me. President Trump said what? He said, I just want... This part is the greatest defense I have ever seen of all time. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen this yet, you're not ready for it. I'm just, I want to gear you up for this, okay? Just imagine, what is the absolute dumbest way? What is the absolute dumbest way uh, that you could think a Republican Donald Trump defender would defend Donald Trump's perfect phone call? Okay? What could it be? said, I just want to find 11,780 votes. That's like saying, I just want to have vanilla ice cream for dessert. It's not a crime to say, I just want something. They're trying to turn that into a crime. It says you'll get- Yes, it's so silly. You walk into a bank and say, I just want $1 million. And all of a sudden, it's considered a crime. You go on Craigslist and hire someone who is an assassination specialist. And then you get in a car with them, and it turns out they're law enforcement, but you don't know that, which is trickery, mind you, which should be a crime. And you tell them, I have money for you. I just want you to kill my ex-wife, Barbara. Why is that a crime? It's as simple as saying, I would like vanilla ice cream. Is Trump the bad guy for having a conversation? Unimaginable. Yes, it's said. It's as the president said in Iowa at the weekend. This is about election interference and preventing him from being the man who will unseat Joe Biden. God forbid men have hobbies like overturning the democratic results of the 2020 election. God forbid, Your Honor, I did not realize it was illegal. <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sebastian Gorka is a Hungarian Nazi uh, who wore a literal uh, Vitezi Rend uh, Nazi pin uh, when he was in the Trump administration. You know, just some of the some of the major players, some of the best boys uh, of that administration. All of these defendants together. Do I intend to try the 19 defendants in this indictment together? Yes. And have you had any contact with the special counsel about the overlap between this indictment and the federal indictment? I'm not going to discuss our investigation at this time. Have there been any conversations? made by former President Trump that this is a politically motivated indictment. I make decisions in this office based on the facts and the law. Um, the law is completely nonpartisan. That's how decisions are made in every case. To date, this office has indicted, since I've been sitting as a district attorney, over 12,000 cases. This is the 11th RICO indictment. We followed the same process. We look at the facts. Donald Trump's lies about the 2020 election. Bananas. Daniel Dale fact checks Trump's claim against Fannie Willis. Uh, Daniel Dale is back. Let's take a look. What got him in the legal uh, the libs are libbing out again, folks. They're libbing out real fucking hard, okay? They're doing the, uh, they're, they're doing the circuit. 
Um, also, uh, someone sent this to me saying, why are you uh, hiding the truth? Hank Pecker is, yes, it's true. Hank Pecker is charged with 12 charges, uh, conspiracy to commit fraud, um, uh, uh, being a false elector, and numerous other charges. Okay. Um, uh, it's true, uh, except, as you guys know, I... Am Hassan Piker. I am not Hank Pecker. So clearly, I am not uh, the same person. Um, speaking of which, before we get to the, I guess we'll do one more. We'll we'll do one more of the libs. I want to talk about Ben Shapiro in a brief moment because he had some really really conflicting takes. Okay. Legal trouble in Georgia, but it's not stopping him from repeating it all over again. A grand jury in Fulton County has now voted to indict him and 18 others on state criminal charges across 41 counts. All of it stemming from their alleged efforts to overturn Trump's loss there. CNN's Daniel Dale is with us now. And Daniel, Trump has fired off a barrage of false claims about what happened in Georgia uh, since election night in 2020. But Give us the truth. Give us give us the fact check. It's it's been two and a half years of lies continuing into this morning when he repeated his vague false claim that the election was rigged. We know that's false. There have also been a bunch of thoroughly debunked specific conspiracy theories. I listed 10 in an article, mm -hmm. 10 lies about Georgia in an article on CNN.com. Two of them stand out to me. One of them is this claim about thousands of dead voters in Georgia. At one point, he said it was 5,000, then he made it 10,000. And so when reporters said, OK, give us some names, the Trump campaign provided names. This was in 2020. We looked into them. These were living people. For example, they claimed that uh, a dead person named Deborah Jean Christensen had somehow cast a ballot. Well, we knocked on the door of the living Deborah Jean Christensen, just a woman who happened to have the same name. So it's an example of just how half-baked many of these lies are. Another one that stands out is this claim that Trump keeps repeating. Yeah, I wonder why they fucking uh, hand-waved half of these court cases away and, and said that there was no standing. Hmm. Think thoroughly discredited, thoroughly debunked Much about to two think. Fulton County election workers supposedly having been caught on camera stuffing the ballot box, taking ballots out of suitcases. They were completely exonerated by a state investigation. It stands out to me because two senior... Yeah, they exonerated them because they the state is in on it, brother. Why they exonerated, nuh-uh, can't hear you, don't care. Senior officials in Trump's own Justice Department, people he appointed himself, have testified. They told him directly in 2020 that there was nothing to this. They, they were not even suitcases. These people did not scan the ballots over and over. It was all wrong. And yet, two and a half years later, the former president keeps saying it. And yet, here we are, still hearing it. I also want to ask you about these repeated attacks uh, on Fonnie Willis, who's the who's the Fulton County DA in this case. In a speech last week, he even claimed that she was having an affair with a gang member. What did you find out about that? <sighs> the, this stuff is honestly so bananas. I'm like hesitant to discuss it on right. television. Right. But let, yeah. me, let me take people through it because it's 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 the baseless, no evidence, it's a complete distortion. So there is a rapper named YSL Mondo who was part of a hip hop collective that Fonnie Willis is also prosecuting members of, alleging that their hip hop group is also a criminal street gang. Now YSL Mondo Daniel, Daniel Dale talking about YSL and Rico charges is so funny because he's doing it in the most, like, actually nerd voice. I love it. It's bananas. <laughs> Mondo did an interview with Rolling Stone magazine in January saying, hey, fun fact, when Fonnie Willis was a defense lawyer in 2019, she actually represented me and we had a cool relationship. She was a great lawyer. He said we had like auntie to nephew, mother to son type talks. And I'm surprised that she's now, you know, basically prosecuting my buddies. Well, the Trump campaign made an attack ad out of that saying that Fonnie Willis concealed a relationship with a, a member of a gang she was prosecuting, even though she. I think this is. Uh, this is really interesting and it betrays a, a better possible PR angle for Donald Trump where he would say, like, free thug, uh, free young thug, you know what I mean? Uh, instead of doing that, they're going with the, oh, Fonnie Willis is actually fucking one of the YSL uh, members. Like, I don't know why he's not going with the, you know, these RICO charges are fraudulent. You shouldn't be throwing uh, uh, RICO at YSL, you know, they did nothing wrong. I feel like they would garner more support if they did that. 
She didn't. She told Rolling Stone, yeah, I used to represent the guy when I was a defense lawyer. Somehow Trump took that further and, and took hiding a relationship to, to make it, you know, she was having an affair, some sort of illicit romantic sexual relationship with a gang member she was prosecuting. That is completely out of thin air, no basis for it whatsoever. But he said it in a speech and then said it again on social media. And you've said it, I'll say it, completely untrue. But thank you so much for going through all of that step by step. The truth, obviously, so important here. Daniel Dale, thanks so much. Thank you. Jim? See you Zachary Cohen. He's been covering this from outside the courthouse in Fulton County. Zach. Make sense of us for of the latest for us uh, the, the latest charges coming out of that courthouse there behind you. Yeah, Jim, a busy uh, legal calendar stacking up here for the former president. We know that the DA Fonnie Willis in Georgia in Fulton County here has given the former president 10 days to voluntarily surrender. She also issued what is effectively an arrest warrant if he does not choose to do so. We do expect Trump to in person turn surrender. Um, to authorities here in Georgia. The logistics and the details of that are still being worked out, but you got to keep in mind as well that there are 18 other co-defendants that were named in this indictment who will also have to turn themselves in to authorities here in Fulton County. So, you know, we're going to have to really see how that plays out in terms of, um, you know, because Bonnie Willis herself has said that she expects and wants to try all 19 individuals, including Trump, together. And that really does sort of underscore what the, the message of this indictment was, the sprawling alleged conspiracy case that Bonnie Right, Trump's case in terms of open and shut. This one being the most open and shut. The second, it's literally the same as as the the uh, timeline. The most open and shut case is the last one. The least open and shut case is the first one, um, and and it's it's the same ranking. Like. The first one is not necessarily a slam dunk. I've, I've, I've categorized it on two different metrics. One, uh, by like, in terms of offense, like real, uh, real world, uh, like actual impact and offense and how big of a, a mistake it was and how open and shut it is. And every single one has only gotten worse and worse. The doc case, the documents case is also open and shut. However, as far as like real time, real world offenses goes, it's not as yeah, that was my dad. Baba, uh, bless you. Did <laughs> Um, so so as far as like uh, the the real world impact, mishandling classified documents and refusing to give them back is depending on what the documents are, not as terrible as like Donald Trump openly conspiring to, to utilize January 6th, try to stop a, a regular process from continuing, succeeding to stop a regular uh, uh, vote certification process from going through in Congress uh, is, is worse. And, and the, the absolute worst one is trying to deliberately uh, do that in the state of Georgia by having a phone call with the lieutenant governor and other people involved in, uh, in, in the uh, elections process. So as far as like real world impact, the last one is the worst one. And as far as being open and shut, the last one is the absolute most open and shut one. Especially considering that he you know, had it, this phone call recorded. Of course he did. He was the president at the time. Ridiculous. Bonnie Willis laid out in these charging documents with everything from organizing fake electors to pressuring state officials to breaching voting machines in Coffee County. It does paint this narrative of a really broad um, a broad conspiracy case that she now is going to try to charge and charge in the near term. Uh, she did not comment when asked on whether she had spoken to the special counsel to coordinate, given there are going to be presumably some competing court appearances, trial dates going forward. Would that be expected in these circumstances? Well, Jim, I think we're kind of in uncharted waters overall here right now with a former president who's now been indicted four separate times and is mm. facing, you know, potential court uh, challenges going forward, a court calendar going forward with four separate 
cases, but you know, a federal, a federal case and a state case like this that do seem to overlap at times, they are going to have to work out the logistics. It, it, it was interesting that Fonnie Willis previously was asked about any contact she had with Jack Smith's team. She said she didn't effectively didn't even know who Jack Smith was. So we'll see how that plays out going forward and if that does change. And joining us now, you saw him in Nick's piece. He's someone who tells. And here is the libbed up. Uh, here is the libbed up ex Georgia lieutenant governor who wrote a book about everything, and also, uh, oh God, it's so good. It's so sick. I can't wait. I can't wait for Ben Shabibo. I'm so glad he gave this to us. What a fucking incredible gift, dude. This is what I mean. Like Trump is such a fucking content machine in so many different ways where where it's just it ends up creating this this massive shockwave of secondary uh tertiary content and joining us now is republican president here is chris christie coming to trump's defense after the latest indictment a shocking term a, a shocking turn of events Presidential candidate and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. All right, so you're a former prosecutor. Yep. But before we get into that, actually, I want to I want to cover something here. So uh, apparently, 4chan is behaving in the most 4chan way possible. First, they leaked the indictments before the jury even voted. Then they forget to redact the juror names from Zero Hedge, uh, and now they are. Um, Oh, look, a hit list. Like, people are saying they're going to go uh, dox them. They're going to go uh, kill them on 4chan. Okay? Close the tab. No, it's it's public information. It, this is public information. I did not know this either, but apparently in, in, uh, in Georgia it is. But, of course, fucking absolute weirdos are using this as an opportunity to... Absolute weirdos are using this as an opportunity to say some of the most unhinged shit, not realizing that they are 100% committing a crime, okay? Threatening jurors, threatening jurors is a crime. You cannot do that. And if you think that uh, law enforcement is not scouring 4chan, well, you're wrong. They absolutely are. After all, if you recall last year, one of these fucking basement dwellers who was not a Fed at all and was talking about how he wanted to execute a sheriff in Florida over and over and over again was arrested for making clear and obvious threats against a law enforcement person. Threatening jurors is like saying, I would like some vanilla ice cream, is of course not going to work for Donald Trump and it won't work for you either. So if you think that the the uh, anonymity is is protecting you here on 4chan, it's not. It absolutely is not, okay? It might protect you from fellow 4chaners, but ultimately, you know, law enforcement has ways of finding your IP. Here is the example that I uh, was referencing. Thank you, MHUD. This is a beautiful picture. There it is. That was, of course, <laughs> scuffed Charlie, more like stuffed Charlie. Okay? The only thing critical about this baby is his, uh, his, his heart palpitations, okay? He's just, he's got critical heartburn. 4chan is be like that one guy from Provo about to be like, duh, I didn't know the FBI could track me. I mean, he's actually a lot more moist than moist critical is, let's be real. Uh, anyway, so there is that. Just wanted to point that out. For full context, other 4chan users were not happy with these posts, basically accusing the users of being feds likely out of fear for the potential harm it could bring to 4chan more broadly, except uh, everybody always says, oh, you're fed posting. Meanwhile, they forget that there are legitimately people like that. There are legitimately people like that on 4chan who are just like so unhinged and so stupid that they think they can get away with all this shit when they're not able to. They won't be able to. So, good luck. And you look at this, and I also, I maybe wanted to ask you that same question. So you have the federal case, which you're very familiar with, and you have a state case, and usually the federal case will supersede the state case, but not in this case. 
Well, th this is why I'm uncomfortable with what I read last night. Um, I, I think that uh, this conduct is essentially covered by the federal indictment, not with the level of detail that they cover it in this, but that's just a stylistic thing. Um, election interference is election interference. It's been charged by Jack Smith, and most of the time what you'd see here would be a state court deferring to a federal prosecution, especially if that federal indictment had already been issued. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this was unnecessary as to Donald Trump. Now, remember, as to the other defendants, Jack Smith chose not to charge them. So I would have less of a problem with this if she decided, okay, I'm not going to charge Donald Trump here because he's been charged for essentially this conduct by Jack Smith. But Giuliani and Meadows and others have not been charged at the federal level. Um, that would be a more defensible indictment, I think. So let me ask you, um, so you agree with what Turley just said then? He, he, he called it excessive. Yeah, I think it was well, unnecessary. Yeah. Why then would you, as a Democratic DA, pursue state charges if you think by law they're already covered in these other cases? See, people, people view this, and your question views it as a partisan <laughs> decision. Don't forget that these prosecutors all have egos. And she's been investigating this thing for two, two and a half years. Jack Smith comes in within the last year. He swoops in, he charges quickly, and she said, whoa, wait a second, I've been looking at this. I'm sure what this indicates is there's not cooperation right. between her office and the special counsel's office. I don't know why he's like doing, I, I don't know why he's deciding to do a different one. Like, I, I don't know why he, he, after just absolutely daggering him, absolutely daggering him nonstop and being called a fat pig, he's just like, yeah, this one's a, a bridge too far. Like, what's going on? Are you, is he, is he just trying to garner more support? I don't know what it is. And I'm sure he wanted her to defer. She chose not to. So uh, what I'd say to the viewers, Bill, is don't necessarily look at this as a, as a partisan decision. This is probably an ego decision where she said, well, hell, I put all this time and effort into wow. this investigation, and I want something out of they it. They were saying the same thing about Alvin Bragg here in New York. Well, and, well. that's right. And, and that's why I think people, we immediately put it into a, it, when they're opposite parties, into a partisan choose. I could tell you from having done this that often I would get on the phone with a local prosecutor when we were investigating the same thing and say to them, I need you to stand down. The problem here is I did that inside New Jersey where those folks had to continue to work with me after this case. Here, they don't have to work together. Mm -hmm. And so there's less leverage that Jack Smith has mm -hmm. against a Fannie Willis or against an Alvin Bragg wow. to say, back off because you're going to need me later on something else. Mm -hmm. Don't do this for an ego an ego boost, which is, I think, what she did here. Um, now, the, the other part to look at, though, is exactly what Jonathan said as well, which is the conduct that underlies here is not just a simple election contest. Not to be an ass, but I don't know the law, so does, does this argument have merit concerning state versus federal? Um, I mean, he already, he already kind of... Va uh, vaporize his own argument by saying they don't have to work together uh, so it doesn't really matter. I've talked about this. I I've, I've talked about this as well, where like what happens to custody, like who gets custody uh, in a situation like this where uh, where the state is prosecuting him on similar charges as well, for the record, uh, uh, fraudulent actions that were committed in that state that impact that specific state, Georgia, with uh, with a federal uh, with a federal court case that has um, with a with a federal ongoing active investigation and court case on uh, similar charges as well. The GA case should take precedence anyway, solely based on the ability to pardon or not. I, it probably won't happen. I don't know. I don't know what it uh, what the timeline looks like. I have no idea. But there have been instances where 
state charges were utilized with like an incredible sweetheart plea bargain deal for the likes of Jeffrey Epstein, if you recall. Jeffrey Epstein had an active federal case against him that was thrown away in a uh, Florida state court that convicted him on much lower charges and gave him a sweetheart plea bargain. If you remember, by the likes of, uh, what was his name, Alexander Acosta, right? Trump's labor secretary. So, so there are instances where uh, a, a, a state investigation uh, could work faster than a federal one, even though the federal one wasn't necessary. The federal one was not out. There was no, uh, like, there were no public indictments or anything like that. If I recall after correctly. You. Donald Trump had three counts of the vote here in Georgia. He had the original count, he had a machine recount, and then he had a hand recount. All those They're things were given me. at his request, the last two in particular. He also was able to contest these things in court in Georgia and did not win. All that stuff, I'd say, is absolutely legal and within his right to do. Where this starts to be problematic for him is the electors, and the pressure that was being put on folks mm -hmm. after all these counts happened. And that's where I think his exposure is in the federal case, and that's where his exposure would be here. Okay. Let's look at call for number four here. This is the Trump court dates that are going to clash with the campaign trail. Uh, I'm sure you're pretty aware of those, and that's actually... Try to be. I, I, I'm sure you are. A lot are. of them. <laughs> um, in addition to that, if you look at the statement that he gave to Fox News Digital last night. Let me read it to you. This is from President Trump himself. He said, this politically inspired indictment, which could have been brought close to three years ago, was tailored for placement right smack in the middle of my political campaign where I am leading all Republicans. Is there something to that? Like if she, nothing. Could she have done this before? It's not. There's nothing okay. to it. Look, and if she had charged him three years ago, he would have said, what a rush to judgment. There's been no investigation. Um, no one's looked into this. And now they're just charging me for political reasons. He wants to have his cake and eat it too. If if, in fact, the charges had happened three years ago, he would have said there was no investigation. It's a rush to judgment. See, Lowe's, what the fuck? Thank you for the 100 gifted subs. God damn, we got Oilers in the chat. Folks, we got big Oilers in the chat, folks. Big Oilers. They're oiled up, folks. They're juicing. If they happen after a full investigation, he says, well, now it was time to work with the campaign. Look, running for president is his choice. No one else is making him do it. But it is not an excuse not for the justice system to continue to operate. And, and I think all of these judges, in the end, will make decisions based upon reasonable availability of all the witnesses and everyone else. And in the end, what Donald Trump has to deal with is, this is not a civil case. He's never been involved in criminal cases before. He's been involved in civil cases where you can just put it off and like, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. He is out on bail in three different jurisdictions. Usually when you're charged, people are, often people are remanded and they stay in prison prior to, prior to the trial. He's been given released on all three, and he'll be released confidently on the fourth one. I, I, I want to talk a little bit about your campaign and what's expected in a moment here, but just one more question. Yes. Yeah. Everyone lit their hair on fire when that phone call was recorded on behalf of Raffensperger, right? It runs an hour and change. Uh, and, and the key line I went back and listened to this morning, Trump says, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find 11,780 votes. Now, and he says repeatedly, in my opinion, this is what we should do, in my opinion, et cetera. If he's speaking his opinion, is there a crime in this conversation? Well, look, I think that's what a jury is going to decide, Bill. I, I, what I would say to you is... Bro, come on. You can't be serious, dude. It's not his... Op that's not an opinion, man. Like, that's a directive, dog. How more? Okay. If we're getting into this level of semantics at this point, it's like you can never convict someone of conspiracy. 
Like, it, 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 we're basically getting to a position where, like, you... We're basically getting to a position where you can never, ever do a crime by voicing your opinion or by writing something. Like, that's just not ever going to happen. Which is wild. Like, that... What the fuck are we doing? Like, oh, it's only a crime if Donald Trump literally put a fucking gun to the, to the lieutenant governor's head? You know? And, and then, or, like, or went in and, and broke in to the, the uh, offices where they were holding the votes and, like, you know, physically manipulated the ballots or something? It's so stupid. That is, that it's not gonna happen. Like I, I don't know. I just, I don't know why they're even trying to to hit this as a as a counter. They did break in and try and manipulate votes. I mean, yes, but Trump didn't. You know what I mean? So technically, it's not his fault. <laughs> Crazy to me. When you listen to the entire conversation, his problem is that he, and you combine it with all the other conversations he's having with Brian Kemp, um, with other officials in the legislature and um, the, the leaders of the legislature, he was attempting to do everything he can to get that result and putting pressure on them. And Alan Dershowitz argued last night that they were doing the same thing on behalf of Al Gore in Florida and in Palm Beach County in the year 2000. Except when Al Gore lost his legal challenges, he conceded the election. Al Gore took it all the way to the United States Supreme Court. He had failed himself of all the legal challenges, Bill. And then when the courts were done, Al Gore said, I still don't agree with it, but the courts are done, I'm, I'm backing off. Donald Trump has been much different. And, in, and I said this to the president in December of 2020 the last time he and I spoke. I said, you have ha you've availed yourself of the courts. There's nothing left. You need to concede the election. And he said, I will never, ever, ever admit it. Mm -hmm. Well, look, if you're gonna continue to use the power of the presidency, which he was doing, to put pressure on people, um, you're gonna put yourself in a very dangerous circumstance. And let's put, take it aside for a second from the criminal. We can't normalize this conduct. I mean, this has never happened before in this country, ever, where you had a candidate for president of the United States conduct himself in this way, to disrespect the election process in this way, to refuse to accept the verdict of the voters. Mm -hmm. And what does it say about his judgment, guys? What does it say about whether or not he's fit to sit behind that desk? Is this really, and by the way, here we are this morning, and I understand why we're doing this, and I'm happy to talk about it because of my background, Yep. But we're not talking about what Joe Biden's doing to this country. We're not talking about the, the poorest border. We're not talking about the fact that well, health care is a mess, right? I think that the Trump people would say that the, that the indictments were by design to prevent them from being able to let him do that. But let's... But Dana, let's, let's, he's, he's made the choice for the last two and a half years. This is what he's been talking about. He has spent most you. of his time before yeah. he was ever charged with anything. All he's been talking about is that the election was stolen. When he was on another show on this network with Brett Baer a month or so ago, and Brett asked him, how are you going to get people who didn't vote for you in 2020, mm -hmm. especially suburban women, to vote for you in 2024? And he said, well, I didn't lose in 2020. I mean, that's before he was charged with anything. That's true. And yet, so we have the New York Times Siena College poll. I'm sure you're aware of it. Trump 54, DeSantis 17. You're down at 2% there. Oh. I know that your polling in New Hampshire is certainly better. Uh, next, we're a week from tomorrow. We'll have the debate. Yep. What is your plan if President Trump isn't there? It's no different than whether he is or isn't there. We need to make a case, any one of us who are on that stage, we need to make the case to Republican voters why we're the best person to beat Joe Biden. And, and I think by Donald Trump not being there, He's showing everybody what a problematic candidate he is against Joe Biden. He's not going to be there because he doesn't want to answer to all of these charges. He doesn't want to be questioned by other candidates about all these charges. All right, let's get to the five Reaction and right see now what they have South to say. Reaction right now from South Carolina Republican Nancy Mace, kind enough to join us. Congressman, very Wait. good to see you again. Good to see you, Neil. What do this you is make? Nancy Mace, the woman with two different faces. This is not the five Well, he yet. can't avoid that forever. Is that a challenge? 
it always has been a challenge, Bill. You bet. No, he should... is that a challenge from you? Oh, it is. Absolutely. I've been saying it all along. If he doesn't show up, he's a coward. And yeah. you'll, will you sign the pledge? Yeah. Of course it, I will. It seems that um, you're playing for New Hampshire. Initially, and, and New Hampshire and South Carolina. Emerson College had a poll just out of, about an hour ago. Trump was at 49 percent. DeSantis was at 8 percent. You were at 9 percent. Yeah. So you got some work to do. Yeah, but let me tell you something, Bill. I'm in this race for two and a half months, and I've got it from nowhere to second place in New Hampshire. If, if you're Governor DeSantis this morning, you're going to be wondering what the hell happened here. Okay, yeah, he's rip him. Rip him. Rip him. Dude, this is, this is it. But the best thing you could do is just, like, absolutely fucking destroy, absolutely destroy Ron DeSantis' chances, okay? It's so fun. He's been, he's been the presumptive front challenger since before he was reelected governor of Florida. I'm now past him in New Hampshire after two and a half months. And yeah, my first goal was to get there. My next goal is to beat Donald Trump. And whether, if he is not willing to show up at the debate, what he's saying is he is unwilling to do two things, to defend his conduct, both at the end of his presidency and since he left, and he is unwilling to lay out his vision for the future about how to beat Joe Biden. He needs to do both, and Republican voters have the right to hear that compared and to the other candidates. Just to be clear, Dana asked you if you were going to sign the pledge. You haven't signed it yet, but you're I going to. I have been presented with it yet. Um, the RNC has not sent me the pledge yet to sign. They're supposedly going to send it to me Ronald this McDaniel's week. Ronald McDaniel is a text away, I do oh, believe. I spoke to her over the weekend. She said they're reviewing all the donors. They, they go through and they verify that you, you do a data sharing yeah. agreement, uh, that all your voters, yeah. your donors are there. They're going through that. What's my opinion on Chris Christie? I love him. He's rotund. He's round. He's a big boy. He's Italian. Governor of New Jersey. He's, he's charismatic. He's going to lose. And he has lost spectacularly. Um, I, I think he's great. Uh, He's a massive asshole. Yeah, he, he is also, uh, in my opinion, one of the few people that could actually, like, rip into Trump in a live setting. However, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Trump destroyed him in one pose. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, he, he keeps fucking getting L's, okay? He, he, he keeps getting, he keeps catching L's from Donald Trump who keeps calling him fat. I just want them to stand side by side and have Chris Christie just straight up be like, you're just as fat. Like, I'm just like slightly fatter than you. The fuck are you talking about? Like, you're going to die before me. You know what I mean? It's as certain as the top of the hour ad break is because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, that's what I want Chris Christie to say. All you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub from Andro Filer. Thank you for the 20 gifted subs. Okay. Absolutely cooked. At the top of the hour, unless you get gifted a sub or you subscribe on your own. Here's the three-minute ad break now process with my campaign now she said as soon as they're done with that she'll send me the pledge and i called her over the weekend to tell her, Gore, thank you for the tank the subs. It, i will sign it because what? the most important thing guys is to be on the stage so our voters get to make an informed choice about who can beat joe biden and donald trump is damaged goods uh, we're in for a big night in milwaukee in eight days looking forward to it chill with the fat phobia so cringe wait what did I say something? Because I said he get, got served the fattest L. Is that why? Like just using the term fat means that. We'll see you there. I'm automatically uh, like being fat. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily. Okay, thank you for the time.